welcome to South County Spotlight on Frontier Community Access Television. As always, I'm your host, Chris Collins. We are once again back in studio with a very special guest from the town of Waitley. He is Selectman Paul Newland, coming in to talk not only about some Waitley issues, but also the return of Watermelon Wednesdays, which is a concert series that Paul produces a great lineup this year. We're going to talk all about it coming up. But first, Paul, let's talk a little bit about the big issue, the big elephant in the room, and that is, of course, scams and what's going to happen with your new town hall. Scams, South County EMS was supposed to go, or is supposed to go, theoretically, into your new building at the former Western Mass Library Systems facility. Now it appears as though there are two potential suitors for that property. It was a big meeting recently, and it looks like Frontier may want to move their administration building over there, which sets up quite a conundrum, does it not? Well, actually, it gives us a choice. Uh, and uh, according to members of the committee I've talked to, the school committee, uh, the Frontier Superintendent's office has been looking for a space for several months and has had our space in mind. And they are more actively pursuing it right now. And um, I have to tell you that um, I'm interested in hearing what they have to say. Uh, I can't commit to it at this point because I don't know the details of their offer, but we're going to meet with them on May 31st to further discuss the possibilities. And to me, this is just a, a responsible uh, road to take given how long it's been taking the SCEM situation to evolve and get over some uh, serious uh, hurdles that have been put in the way. Um, and the latest one being a request for proposals to have the site put somewhere else, potentially. And this has been uh, put out by the town of Deerfield. And uh, I was under the impression, and most of us were under the impression, SCEMS people as well as select board members, that the Waitley facility would make a, a perfect place for it. And that's what various reports have said. But evidently, there's, there's several people who are interested in, in seeing if there's an alternative location that would be more to their liking. And I don't know exactly what that would be or, or what places people are thinking about. But the town of Deerfield uh, is pursuing seeking alternatives, and uh, has put out this RFP to get proposals. Now, doesn't Waitley have to respond to that or not? Waitley is responding to it. Right. Yeah. Now, we're, some of the we're submitting a proposal. Mark uh, Prohensky is working on that this week and next week uh, to get that in. Now, I haven't seen the language of the RFP, but my understanding, at least my tacit understanding is, that what Deerfield's looking for is proposals to keep it in Deerfield, right? Well, that's what the original language of the RFP implied. Uh, however, I have seen just this morning that there have been some language changes addended to the proposal that was sent out. And so that I believe what's going to happen is that all the potentially interested parties are going to be notified that <coughs> the, the language has been changed to make any of the three towns uh, eligible if they meet the criteria specified in the proposal. And there's several criteria specified and they're rated advantageous, not advantageous, strongly advantageous. Now time is an issue here because as I understand it, Frontier has got some problems with the air quality in the building they're currently in, the administration building. That's correct. And they want to get in as most administrations, I would think, would. They want to move in over the summer, right? They want to move in over the summer, and if they don't get in by the beginning of the next school year, then we may be looking at having to ride out the next school year before they would be ready to move in if Waitley decided that we would accept their offer and house them instead of SCEMS. Now, it's I can speak for all of us on the board when I say that it's been our intention all along to house SCEMS in this facility. We sold uh, the town of Waitley, the residents of town meeting, on the idea that this was a, a good facility to buy because it would house not only Waitley administrative offices, which we needed to centralize, but also SCEMS would be a partner, and that would be good for everybody. And certainly the studies that have been done 
have indicated that the location in Waitley is probably the best location in terms of meeting the needs of all three towns. It's centrally located uh, and so that's why it was sort of a shock to the system when we found out that Deerfield was issuing this RFP. They're the fiscal agent so they can decide to do what they want essentially and so they've decided that it's in their best interest or the town of Deerfield's best interest to put in an RFP and see if they can uh, I guess several citizens in, in South Deerfield in particular have been arguing uh, vehemently that um, South Deerfield would be a better location, despite studies to the contrary. So they persuaded enough members of uh, the town meeting to, uh, I guess, vote for putting out this RFP. So we'll, we'll see. We'll have to wait. Now we're going to wait. I mean, I'm concerned as a representative Waitley that we have this nice office space just sitting there unoccupied and so that's a revenue loss for us um, and so I'm personally and I can't speak for the board here about the school committee I'm, I'm very receptive to having the school committee come in I think they make an excellent uh, uh, tenant and uh, you know it, it's a very compatible uh, sort of work the administrative work that's already being done in the building unlike the uh, emergency medical service, but I think either either one would make a great tenant. And you're also <clears throat> sort of handcuffed a little bit because you can only have certain types of, of organizations in there, right? Because right. of the terms of the loan you have. Yes, we have a USDA loan, Department of Agriculture loan, that specifies as long as we're paying off the loan, we can have tenants, but they have to be uh, public uh, occupants or municipal occupants. So both SCEMS and the school uh, superintendent's office meet that criteria. Now, I want to clear up any misconceptions that may exist because I was at that meeting and you were very clear, you're not trying to throw a monkey wrench into SCEMS plans. You're looking out for the town's interest fiscally because every day that someone's not in there is lost money. Well, right? that's, that's correct. And not only am I not trying to throw a wrench in it, I'm trying to sort of recover for Waitley from the last wrench that's been thrown into the process, which is this RFP. As far as I'm concerned, that's a wrench that's been thrown into it. Not by us, but you know, we'll do what we can do to get the building occupied as soon as possible. I sense there's quite a bit of frustration at the way this whole thing is going with Deerfield and it's tough. I mean, this, is, this has never really been tried before in this county, in this particular part of the county where three towns have gotten together on an ambulance service there's going to be growing pains. It just seems like there are more growing pains than need to be. Well, I think so, too, and it is frustrating, but we have had success with senior housing. Uh, we've cooperated well there. We have a regional front, uh, high school. That seems to go well, and uh, it's a real shame that this is meeting so many roadblocks, especially since SCEMS, the South County EMS system, uh, has it, that's a regional effort. Uh, Right now, it's sort of spread out, so we want to concentrate it. But even spread out, it's, it's shown a, a market improvement in response times. And really, what we're talking about here is public safety and, and emergency medical service. And we all want the best we can get for our three towns. So. Your colleague, Jonathan Edwards, sort of made the point, and I, I don't know if it's, I totally agree with it, but I haven't been as close to it as he has. And his feeling is that if if SCEMS doesn't come to Waitley, it's going to be tough for them to be viable long term because Waitley is by far, in many people's views, including that report, the best possible location to put it all under one roof. His feeling is if it doesn't come to Waitley, maybe it's not around in a few years. That was what I took from that meeting. Would you, would you agree with that analysis? I don't, I don't quite agree with that. I, I think I, I didn't get that from what Jonathan was saying, although I know he's very frustrated about this. And... Uh, He's worked hard and been a very outspoken proponent of having SCEMS move in. And, you know, I have too, and I'd like to see SCEMS move in. But, you know, if it moves somewhere else, I'm not sure what the effect on, on service is going to be because the only, the only data we have is data from, from studies that have indicated that Waitley's, uh, you know, probably the best location in terms of response times and community service to the com three communities. So The other know. tough part is you could get probably a better deal from Frontier than you would in terms of, of just dollars. I mean, Well, that's, that's right. And that's another, you know, that 
Again, I'm, I'm willing to go for, we, we gave Skims what I think is a good deal, a very good a deal. A rock bottom deal. A, a rock bottom deal. The commercial rates for real estate, like office real estate's on the market. Now this isn't commercial market, it's a public municipal, are about $15 a square foot. And I think we're closer to $5 a square foot for, for Skims. Yeah. Uh, the uh, superintendent's office, the school might be willing to pay closer to 10 than 5, which would be better for us, of course, to be able to maintain the building. But we'll, we'll just have to see how that plays out. I'm not doing it on a revenue, uh, yeah. you know, based on our need for revenue, but it is a need and we have to be cognizant of it. I mean, I represent the taxpayers of Waitley, so. Well, it's also a bird in the hand factory. I mean, you got one, one entity that wants to come in. You could probably sign a deal tomorrow to get them in there. If, and they want to get in. Yeah. They really want to get in, and we don't want to lose that if Skims, at the last minute, whatever happens ends up somewhere else, then we're stuck with a big space. And you're also more likely to have Frontier in there long term, longer term, because Skims, I think, eventually is going to want to build their own facility once they get really up and rolling and get some dollars under their belt. Well. I, I, I can't speak to that. I, I don't know what the future is going to bring. If anything, I, I don't know what the demographics are, but I think population is not growing by leaps and bounds yeah. in this area. Yeah. So whether or not they need to grow and expand is debatable. Okay, let's move on to another topic uh, of fiscal importance. The, the town's going to lose some, some of its tax revenue, a pretty good chunk of it, with a change in tax status for one of your companies. It's about $220,000. Talk about that a little bit. Well, Covestra uh, is uh, it, it located in Waitley, and they've been uh, an important source of revenue to, as you say, the tune of about $220,000 a year. And they have changed their tax status so that they no longer have to pay personal property tax. And that revenue was a form of personal property tax. So that's a blow, um, and we'll just have to we'll just have to absorb it somehow. Yeah. So, as you said, and it was said during the meeting, um, you know that that's a big chunk of money for Whitley. For a bigger community, maybe it's not as tough to fill that mm -hmm. hole. But mm -hmm. so I mean, are cuts in the offing? I mean, I guess it's going to take a little time to figure out what happens where and how it works. Yeah, I don't know. This is a new development, and uh, I'm not sure where things are going to shake out here on this. I can't say we're going to, we're going to cut positions for that. We don't have a lot of positions to cut. Exactly. So I, you know, you run it pretty, pretty tight anyway. And my, then of course you were on a cell phone tower project as well. Yeah. And that's also in the works. So that might bring in some revenue. Well, that will bring in revenue. Uh, the, as we discussed at that meeting, the American, uh, I believe it's American tower or American, I forget the actual name of the company that has, uh, bought the tower um, for either $1.2 million down or I believe it's $1.6 million spaced out over several years. And what we, have, what we discussed at that meeting with our finance committee was uh, which form of payment makes the most sense yeah. for Waitley. And I think that's something we'll need to explore a little more in depth because it's not clear to me. Some people say a lump sum would be better, and other people say it'd be better to meter it out over 10 years or whatever because of this other tax shortfall. And it was a good debate, good discussion. Uh, but as I said in that meeting, uh, I don't believe we have enough, I don't believe I have enough information to be able to definitively say option A is better than option B because I just don't know what the ramifications of each are. Where is the town on? Solar. I know the Deerfield just put a solar farm project in place. Is Waitley looking at any kind of solar arrays, and what could that do? Waitley is a green community, mm -hmm. has been for several years. So we have modified our bylaws to make it more, uh, to make it easier for certain size sites to be established in the town. Um, we don't have any specific plans. We've had some uh, prospectors approach us with wanting to put up an array and get the tax benefits therefrom and uh, maybe let local people buy into it. But we don't have a specific plan right now. I know Waitley is one of the most developed communities in the Commonwealth with regard to solar. I think we have 
probably five megawatts worth of solar yeah. being produced right now. And uh, we have a lot of residents with solar. And by the way, out there in TV land, <laughs> it is a great investment if you can afford the upfront capital costs. And if you can't, and your income is uh, sufficiently low, you can get very good yeah, yeah. Uh, deals on low interest loans to go solar. And uh, my electric bill, I've had solar for about 10 years. It's about zero wow. this month. It's, it's about zero for about five months of the year. I mean, I know people that have converted their homes to solar and they actually, they, they pay to the solar company, I think, a note for a certain amount every year. And it's less than what they were paying in electricity and it's all renewable. I mean, well, and after a certain amount of years, they own the system outright. Exactly. I mean, there's, there's various uh, financing structures for doing solar, so people should uh, look into that. Uh, the Mass uh, Clean Energy Center, MassCEC.org, I believe, has lots of information on this. Uh, it's a great investment. Obviously, it's better if you have a new roof, if your house is facing south. But people are putting ground-mounted solar arrays into yeah. their backyards or wherever. And uh, I've ne never met anybody who regretted putting up solar. And in fact, it increases the resale value of your house by yeah. about $15,000. And it's, it's the wave of the future. I mean, I think solar, more than wind and any other renewable technology, is the one that's going to be most common. Oh, absolutely. And absolutely the most uh, easily put together and the most, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the most, uh, not just promising, but efficient. I mean, it's well, efficient. efficient. I mean, look at your oil. I mean, okay, so solar produces electricity. Yeah. Not like your oil burner or oil boiler or furnace, but it's almost maintenance free. Mm -hmm. And they last for at least 25 years and probably longer. And I can't imagine buying a boiler and letting it sit there for 10, 15 years maintenance free. I mean, that just doesn't happen. happen. No, no way. And plus, of course, all the benefits for solar, we don't have to enumerate, but you know, the, clearly. Uh, one thing I like about it is that it creates a lot more local jobs. Yes. I mean, you have uh, construction workers who are putting these arrays up, and uh, if you're dependent on the utilities for electricity, that's, you know, the utilities are getting larger and larger. Eversource just merged and, you know, the service is getting worse. The rates go up and down, so I, I can't comment on that definitively. But, uh, but to provide your own electricity, is, uh, it's a great investment in so many ways for the planet, for local labor, and, uh, you know, for peace of mind and reliable energy. Before we talk about Watermelon Wednesday, one more last topic. Uh, you're losing your town administrator, Mark Rohensky. He's going to be going to Richmond, which is much closer to his town of Great Barrington. Not going to be easy to replace. It seems like town administrators are dropping like flies all over the area in terms of taking other opportunities. Uh, where are you in the process to replace him, and uh, is it going to be easy to replace him? Well, it's going to be... I think it's going to be impossible to get somebody like Mark again. I, I think he was, uh, he was a rare rare find. We were, we were we're very happy to have had him. I knew he wasn't going to last. I mean, let's face it, Waitley is a, it's not a booming metropolis where somebody who has a lot of skills and is young and, you know, concerned about his future and all is uh, more likely to move on to a bigger, sure. more rewarding and financially also ways than we can afford to be. Although I have to say that Mark has probably experienced as much, uh, as much uh, sort of challenging uh, problems in this little town as he might have if he were the administrator for Cambridge or Northampton. So he's had a baptism by fire, and I think he's performed admirably. I'm very upset. I was very upset when Lynn Sibley moved on. Right. And then we got Mark, and I'm going to be more, you know, upset uh, again. Well, I am upset that he's leaving. <laughs> I'm very sorry. And also, we're in the middle of the skims thing. And yeah. luckily, we got the building under our belts. But now we have to get the building occupied. And we have to figure out some issues of what to do with the old town hall, et cetera, et cetera. And we got the water. The water issue was dealt with finally. Uh, and, and large thanks due to Mark. Also, Mark has performed admirably in coming up 
by finding um, additional f sources of funds that were there all along that were uh, finally consolidated and put into free cash. And so uh, it's made Waitley, he's made Waitley a lot better off. He just seems like a classy guy too. And a young guy, you know, a lot of energy and a lot of knowledge. And it's tough to find a package like that. It's very tough. He's unflappable. He's put up with a lot. And uh, he's, like I say, he's just performed admirably. And I'm sorry to see him go. Are there any good candidates to replace him at this point? Where are you in the search? Well, I'm hopeful because the last time we had a search, uh, Mark wasn't the only candidate that people were excited to offer the job to. So oh. if that person or people are still out there, please apply. Um, we need you. We want you. And we're also upping the pay. So that oh, should good. be additional incentive. And uh, I, I'm, I think we've had, we've had a flurry of uh, candidates apply. So we have a screening committee and then after they're done their work going through the, the, pre, the application uh, stage, the initial stage, then it'll go to the board with the finalists, uh, maybe three finalists, I'm guessing. A time frame? I mean, he's out of here when? In, uh, June 1st. June 1st. So yeah. you got to get somebody before the end of the fiscal year, I would think, ideally. If possible. Yes. Yes, we do. All right. That's enough of the tough stuff. Let's talk about the, the, the fun stuff. Okay. Wa watermelon Wednesday. All right. Now this is, it's become an institution. And how long has it been going on? This, this is year 17. It's the 17th year. But lately, I mean, I've just learned about this since I came down here. And, and I'm amazed at the number of acts you pull in. I mean, how do you, first of all, how do you determine who you're going to have? The, is it the kind of thing where when you, when you wrap up the year, you start immediately looking for new acts for next I year? I already have acts for next year. You already do. Yeah, year. I mean, people are contacting me from all over the world. I mean, you know, it's not that grandiose, but I do get requests from European, uh, Irish. Really? Oh, yeah. Agents. They have agents in New York, and mm -hmm. they're always looking. And, you know, people are, are planning for next year. There are a lot of festivals that uh, uh, agents want their artists to perform at for more uh, visibility. And, uh, and also, uh, Chris, artists, um, artists are relying more on live entertainment now than they've had to in the past because digital sales aren't helping them as much as yeah. uh, hardware sales, the use of records and world, CDs. Yeah. It's a very different world. And so uh, performers, A, like to perform generally, and B, they make money performing now. And uh, that's an important source of revenue for them. Now, when they come in here, is it just a, is it a showcase? Is it a paid gig? How does it work? It's a paid gig. Is it really? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, I, and <laughs> I've had to raise my rates. Um, I wish I could lower my rates, but I have this beautiful venue that the Congregational Church lets me use, the West Whateley Chapel, which has fantastic acoustics. It's, it's wonderful to see artists and hear them play in this space. And then after the show, more often than not, they'll sit on the stage and they'll keep playing to themselves because they love the sound so much. Wow. And this is without amplification sometimes. Mm -hmm. I've had, yeah, that, I mean, that happens a lot. The artists will go, wow, this is, I've never performed in a place like this. So, and they also love the crowd because the audience comes there, they sit and they listen to the, to the artists. This is not like a bar scene or no. the Calvin or a big theater. It's a very intimate performance space, which is something that, you know, artists, once they get to a certain level, don't get to enjoy that as much. Right. And we feed them at our house across the street and, uh, get to know them a little. So it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. You also made some technological, technical, technical upgrades, right? To the oh, yeah. chapel. Yeah. Well, just yesterday we put electric service in, uh, which, which may seem surprising, but I can't say anything more about that, except now we have uh, underground service to the chapel from the late. So this is a big improvement. Yeah. We still have a rather uh, primitive plumbing situation, which, I often go into explaining to the audience before the show so they know how to use it. Um, and last year I bought lights, stage lights, ah. on a mount, LED lights with colors. So that was big. And a new soundboard, because we do amplify, we do have microphones and such, and uh, I have a PA system that I'm learning how to use still. 
So yeah, there have been some improvements. It's now it's good. usually, from what I see, it's a pretty packed room, right? I mean, how, how, what does it seat? How many people? Uh, it seats around 90. 90, and yeah. usually it's full, right? It's, uh, last year was full except for one, one, uh, one uh, show. And this year it's filling up. So uh, I expect, although the prices have gone up, like I say, uh, in order to pay for some of these improvements, but also the artists are asking for more money. Right. Now, I can only talk them down so little and then they'll go somewhere else. Yeah, I get it. But, I, I, you know, I'm not, I don't think you're talking to anybody down. It's just the reality of the, of the business. It's the reality of the business and, uh, and it's the reality of the fact that the space is limited. Yeah. And so as the artist's uh, salaries go up, the number of seats don't go up. That means the cost per seat goes up. Right, so exactly. there's only so much I can do about oh, it's, that. It comes down to economics. I mean, you have to be able to cover your expenses and make a little more. Than, so who are some of the acts this year for Watermelon Wednesday? So June 1st is the first show. Mm -hmm. There are still tickets available. Actually, there are still tickets available for all 13 shows. June 1st starts out with Mr. Sun. Mr. Sun is a um, four-piece acoustic, mainly acoustic band. And forgive me for not being able to describe their music more intelligently, but mm -hmm. it's, they play different styles. Uh, it's a terrific band. I saw them last year at the Gray Fox Bluegrass Festival. I go to festivals and I sure. listen to you new acts. Scout, and I right? say, yeah. But I know the people in this band. Daryl Anger's the fiddler. He's, he's played with everybody, literally. Uh, Joe Walsh is an amazing uh, mandolinist. And Joe Walsh, not the Joe Walsh from the Eagles. This is a different no, Joe no, Walsh. No, no, this is a different Joe <laughs> Walsh. They, uh, Joe and Daryl both teach at Berkeley School oh, of okay, Music. Yeah. Yeah, no, they're, they're super pros. Um, and let's see, uh, also Grant Gordy, who's one of the best acoustic guitarists on the scene, bar none. And Ethan uh, Jehadowitz, I may be mispronouncing his last name, is the bass player. This is an all-star band, yeah. and they'll play sort of traditional Americana, rootsy uh, string band music. but with A little bit of bluegrass thrown in. A little, yeah, partly bluegrass, partly old-time, partly swing, a little jazzy. It's really... It's high energy stuff. As soon as people go to the website, they can click on the artist's page and hear, or go to YouTube and hear some of these people play. And once you do that, you will come back and you will hit the buy ticks and you will come to Waitley and have a great night of great music. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We'll be happy to be able to be there for a lot of these concerts, but certainly go to the concerts because there's nothing quite like live music. There but, is nothing like it. But you'll be able to watch them after the fact anyway. But. Uh, it's going to be a great season of Watermelon Wednesday. Paul Newland has been my guest from the town of Waitley, Waitley Selectman, and the producer of Watermelon Wednesdays. Thanks. And that will do it for South County Spotlight. Thanks for watching. For all of us here at FCAT, have a good day.